Hello, my name is Brendan Kelly. This is my presentation on lead bismuth eutectic coolants. Uh, I'm just going to give 10 seconds before my presentation starts just to ensure that the volume is working and at an appropriate level. Uh, thank you for your patience and letting me present this way. Um, I do apologize if there's any troubles in class. <laughs> Lead bismuth eutectic is a heavy liquid metal first proposed for use as a coolant for fast reactors in the United States in 1950. Today it is a proposed coolant for the lead cooled fast reactor. Also it is considered for liquid spallation neutron sources and accelerated driven systems which are the subcritical reactors. Shown on the slide are some other considerations for lead variations for coolants. We have lead, uh, lead bismuth eutectic, LBE, which is this focus. Uh, there also is lead lithium eutectic, magnesium eutectic structure again. All have been studied. LBE is expected to be used in most accelerated systems projects today mainly due to its low melting temperature around 124 125 degrees Celsius uh, this results in lower corrosion and it's easier to maintain uh, more on this on the property slide however as mentioned lead bismuth eutectic coolants were studied in the United States in the 1950s but were dismissed due to unfavorable material properties and basically sodium was chosen as a focus of the study. A program for studying the compatibility of lead, bismuth, their alloys with potential reaction materials did exist between 1950 and 1962 at the Brookhaven National Laboratory. After this, LBE was basically dropped by the Americans and picked up by the Russians. As the Russians, or the Soviet Union, I'm going to use the terms interchangeably, uh, began to commit towards LBE as a coolant, they needed to start somewhere, so they began developing off of their existing nuclear reactors. The existing at the time were PWR November class submarines, specifically Project 645. Uh, this was a... PWR powered nuclear submarine run by two RM1 reactors which each had an output of 73.5 megawatts thermal. Developing off November class project 645 the first big step towards the Alpha class was the initial prototype the PAPA class this was given project 661. This project produced an extremely fast anti-shipping missile equipped submarine, the K-162. In fact, this was the world's fastest submarine at the time. The Papa class was innovative as the Soviet Union wanted to not reuse old solutions, instead strive for innovation. This produced a unique submarine, but also an expensive and slow to develop submarine. The Papa class would only see one submarine ever set sail. Development evolved towards the Alpha class, as the Alpha class would soon become the world's second fastest submarine only to be done by the PAPA prototype. After the PAPA class was abandoned, the Alpha class began. The Alpha submarine used one of two reactor types. Both were lead bismuth cooled and rated for 155 megawatts thermal. Both also used highly enriched uranium-235. Alpha uses a titanium hull and a powerful lead cooled fast reactor. This powerful reactor compared to the PWR previous reactors accounted for much more power output with much less space requirements. 
This resulted in the submarine achieving such high speeds. The downside was the reactor needed to be kept warm at all times and had a relatively short fuel lifespan. This resulted in them, the Alpha class being used sparingly or kept in harbor ready for a high speed run into the North Atlantic. Remember this was Cold War time. If the submarine was operating and was to be docked, the reactor needed to be kept warm. Its reactor could be kept in a hot port until ready for departure once more. This was done by utilizing superheated steam generated from a special facility. If the temperature of the reactor fell below 135, the fuel would solidify and would be impossible to restart the reactor. All fuel assemblies would have been frozen in the solid coolant. Therefore, these superheated steam facilities were built and operated to service these alpha class of submarines. As mentioned, the alpha class of submarines used one of two types of reactors. Both were lead bismuth cooled, rated for 155 megawatts thermal. Both used highly enriched uranium 235. BM-40A was used for the first three of seven alpha class submarines with Project 705. The second type was called OK-550. Was used for the final four of seven submarines. This was Project 705K. BM-40A, the first one, had two steam circulating loops, loops and a fixed beryllium reflector. The second type, OK-550, had a branch first loop and triple circulating loops and sumps. The four submarines with OK-550 were with a fixed beryllium reflector attached to the core and removed with the fuel. In both of these reactors, there was significant effort to solve corrosion issues due to lead bismuth eutectic reactions. The fact that these reactors had to remain on at all times accelerated these degradation issues, including the corrosion. The facilities that produced the superheated steam to keep the reactors running eventually broke down. This resulted in the submarines being decommissioned in the early 1980s. Now to review some technical detail of the reactors just mentioned. For the RM1, which is the dual reactors found in the November class, the emergency protection rods, control rods, and emergency cooling tube pass through a special, special shield plug on top of the core. There were 10 control rods. Both emergency protection rods and control rods were made of europium hexabromide. The content of europium resulted in a very high activity of the control rods. There were 24 emergency cooling tubes. The total amount of uranium in the RM1 core was 90 kilograms and an enrichment of 90%. On contrast, the larger 40A from the Alpha class has about 200 kilograms of uranium. All of the reactors discussed in these classes have approximately 3,000 fuel rods in each core. Here is the phase diagram for a lead bismuth. We can see the liquidus and solidus lines. A eutectic point at 55 weight percentage and a melting temperature of 124 which is where we get our coolant from and also a peritectic point at 32 percent with a melted temperature of 184 the solubility limits in solid state you can see 21 percent which is the alpha phase region and 
0.5% which is the gamma phase region and we see an intermetallic compound state which is the beta phase again our coolant is at the tactic point I just thought this would be interesting to show shown are two tables comparing various coolants and their properties sodium and LBE have very different densities and specific heat capacities but have similar volumetric heat capacities they have similar volumetric flow rates and thus for the same flow geometry there will be similar flow velocity the difference is as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation larger pumping requirements and a higher pressure drop for LBE the difference is viscosity plays a huge role corrosion is also increased with the use of LBE as a coolant for these reasons the flow rate is limited in an LBE cooled reactor this limits heat transfer and overall efficiency one of the significant disadvantages LBE has when compared with sodium. In summary, the pros and cons are as follows. LBE has a higher boiling point than liquid sodium coolants, making it safer at higher temperatures. Lead and LBE also do not react with air, unlike sodium. This eliminates the need for intermediate cooling loop, saving costs, Space and complexity. Lead and bismuth both both act as a radio radiation shield and will not produce any gamma emitters. Again, unlike sodium, when, expo when exposed to intense neutron fields, this means less shielding for lead bismuth detected coolants than with sodium coolants. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Good luck to the rest of the presenters. I'll be watching by the media link. Have a good day.